Right, so recently we've heard a lot about Apple moving chip production to the US, and there has been reports regarding TSMC producing a chip plant based in Arizona, and while this has now been confirmed, so let's delve into it. CS yes, Tim Cook himself has confirmed that TSMC's new Arizona plant is going to begin producing chips in the near future, and he plans to, of course, produce more components in the US. Now, apparently, TSMC is spending $40 billion producing this chip plant, and the first plant's going to open in 2024, with the second one opening in 2026. Now, it seems Apple's very eager to start relying on this plant because the initial plan was to produce 5 nanometer chips. But now they're going to produce 4 nanometer chips, and apparently the initial order was going to be 20,000 wafers per month, but now there's going to be an increase, and yeah, Apple is going to get a third of the output as soon as production begins. And apparently they also have initial plans to produce 3 nanometer chips, and so yeah, with the progress of this plant being this rapid, I'm sure Apple wants to rely on this ASAP. And it makes sense, because their reliance on China has affected iPhone production since, of course, demand has now massively reduced due to the supply shortage and so it's key Apple diversifies their supply chain and starts relying on other countries. And yes, I know some of you guys might say that while the chips are going to be produced in the US, the phones are still going to be assembled in China, right? Well yes, that could initially be the case, but do remember India's becoming more prominent, they're already shifting a majority of iPhone 14 Pro shipments to India as we speak, so I do think other countries are going to be more involved in the assembly process. I think the only possible downside to this news is of course price increases. The whole reason Apple relies on China so much is because their labour is so cheap, and so moving production to the US, India and also other countries could increase Apple's margins, and of course that could give us higher prices. Although, to be honest, I would be fine with the price hikes if, of course, these new products are readily available, because it's not great that months after the release, you can't still walk into a store and just get the 14 Pro Pro Max, there are still huge waiting times, and so yes, I'm willing to pay a higher price if, of course, these iPhones are readily available. And to be fair, I don't think the price hikes are going to be as bad as some think, because Apple can subsidise their products by leaning more into ads and services. Now, do you know, I'm not a fan of this, but we have heard a lot about Apple putting more ads within iOS, and that, of course, could help lower prices. Also, remember, services is recurring revenue for Apple, so once again, they don't need to rely on their margins. They can make the money back through ads and services. So yeah, overall, this is fantastic news, and I'm glad Apple's becoming less reliant on China's factories. Anyways, let's delve into questions regarding Apple products. So James says, I still believe the 12-inch MacBook will be the rumoured white bezel slash white keyboard colourful MacBook we saw a few months ago. I think that's likely to replace the M1 MacBook Air in the lineup. So actually, yes, I do agree with this because there were so many prominent leaks regarding white bezels and a colourful design coming to the MacBook Air, but that did not pan out. And so giving it to a cheaper MacBook, like the 12-inch MacBook Revival, would make sense. And it would put off some consumers because I'm sure some will hate the white bezels. And that's good news for Apple because ultimately they want to upsell consumers. And so yeah, this machine being colourful with white bezels could upsell consumers to higher-end MacBooks. But for the target demographic, which are students, I think the colourful design and the white bezels is going to be very attractive. And essentially, it should be a modern version of the iBook. So at T Green says, I have the 12-inch MacBook with the Core i7 16 gigs in perfect condition. I'm a light user. As an illustrator, iPad is my main device. I love this MacBook. Still works very fast and snappy. Was too expensive at launch, but I'm never selling it, so it doesn't matter. And yes, I was also a fan of the 12-inch MacBook. I think it had a ton of potential because the design was ahead of its time, it's portable, it's light, it basically was perfect apart from the awful Intel chips. And while I'm glad that you were happy with the performance, I know many weren't, especially for the high price. And yeah, Intel kinda underdelivered on their promises, which did ruin the potential of this machine. However, this light, thin, fanless form factor is now perfect in the era of Apple Silicon because Apple Silicon super efficient, it gives you incredible performance, and so yeah, just putting an M1 in this would make this one of the best entry-level laptops, and I'm hoping Apple does revive it. So Joe says, will the iPad be rendered useless if we see a 12-inch MacBook? I know it's completely different OS's, 
but the iPad will be more expensive and more limited compared to Mac OS. Now, yes, I can understand that perspective, but I think the iPad does still have a niche audience it appeals to because remember, you can't get a touchscreen with the MacBook, you can't get Apple Pencil support, and so for those who need that, even a sub $800 MacBook will not fit their purpose. And like I've said in previous videos, I'm sure there's going to be big compromises if this actually becomes a super cheap MacBook. For example, no biometrics, I could see that being the case. Maybe the display won't be as bright, maybe it has no P3 support. Basically, whatever Apple does with the budget iPad, to differentiate it massively from the rest of the range, I can see that applying to this MacBook. And so I think specs-wise, the iPad should still be better. So E-Boy Mario says, I remember back in 2020 there were rumours regarding the 12-inch MacBook becoming the first Apple Silicon Mac. And yes, I remember this as well. In fact, I believe I covered this back in mid-2020. But yes, I still think this would have been the perfect Mac to launch M1 with because it would perfectly demonstrate how efficient M1 is since Apple can say that, hey, because of Intel, the 12-inch MacBook sucked. But now look at it with the M1 chip, it's so much better now and that's due to Apple Silicon CS. Yes, I think it was a mistake to not launch this, I think there's a market for this, and many of us want that 12 inch form factor. So Brian says, Apple and cheap should never be in the same sentence, and no matter what, there's no compromising when it comes to Apple products, no matter which one you get, it's great. Now I too have to disagree with that because, first of all Apple does make cheap products, Take, for example, the iPhone SE, the iPads. Those are cheaper versions of their flagship products. But also, heck yeah, Apple's compromising on those lower-end products. For example, the iPhone SE still reuses the iPhone 6 body, so it has super thick bezels, that home button on the front. And the same goes for the new base iPads. That literally has Apple Pencil 1 support to compromise the experience, and you have to use a stupid dongle instead. However, depending on the price, I am willing to live with these compromises. For example, the iPad 9 has super thick bezels, it still has a home button on the front, but it's a cheap iPad, and it does the job for the most part, so I can forgive those downgrades. The same goes for the base Apple TV that has no HDMI and of course no thread support, but I'm fine with that for the price. And so if Apple makes the right compromises with the 12-inch MacBook and gives us a good price, I'm willing to accept it. But if they go down the iPad 10 route and give us too many compromises and also a pretty high price, then yes, the market's going to reject it. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this report in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video link above on details regarding Apple's VR headsets. And on that note, see ya peeps.